Hello, I'm Brenton. Welcome to Spectrum. Glad to be with you today. Looking forward to a great program. We've got two really informative guests today. You do not want to miss out on one minute. Luke Gothier, who is with Americans for Prosperity, is going to be with us. And we're going to follow that with uh, another interview with Elisa Martinez. Elisa is with the New Mexico Alliance for Life. Both of these uh, friends are going to be sharing with us information that's very pertinent to things that are going on in our state as we're talking about getting out of poverty, talking about the life issue. Stay with us. Pleased to have with us today Luke Gothier, who is the Community Engagement Director for Americans for Prosperity. And Luke, we're looking forward today. I don't think we've ever had the opportunity of interviewing someone from your organization. Thanks for coming and sharing with us. Well, I appreciate the opportunity to be here this evening. Thank you. Well, we look forward to learning. Uh, it's always good to be able to kind of learn some additional things about what's going on in our state and what's going on nationally. Tell us a little bit about yourself and kind of connect that to how you got involved with Americans for Prosperity. Well, I've been in New Mexico since 1995. I graduated from Highland High School. Um, been in New Mexico since. Um, it is home. I love New Mexico. I love the weather. I love green chili. I love red chili. If you, if you, don't, like, if you don't like red and green chili, I'm not sure you can be a true New Mexican. Uh, I, do, I agree. <laughs> Uh, do you know what? New Mexico is home. It's a beautiful state, has beautiful people. I've had the pleasure of living um, not just here in Albuquerque, like I do currently, but in Alamogordo, Santa Fe, Española. And I can tell you from corner to corner, this is a beautiful state. It is. And I love it. Very unique. Well, let's talk a little bit about the organization you're representing today, Americans for Prosperity. Uh, who is that organization? Some folks may have heard of them, but many probably have not. So tell us about the organization. We're a national organization, a nonprofit under the Stand Together Trust, which is a, another nonprofit. And we work on building community. We work on political engagement. We work on issues that matter most to Americans, being government, healthcare, education, and business. That is pretty all encompassing, honestly, when you, you think about how much those uh, aspects really in, impact our life. So, uh, American. Americans for Prosperity are in working in different aspects, different sectors. Tell us a little bit about what you do. I mean, what do you do to really get things, the rubber meeting the road, so to speak? Well, what we really do is we educate the community on issues that are affecting us, that are you know, causing barriers to our prosperity in New Mexico. It could be overregulation. It could just be a bad policy. Um, it could be an issue that New Mexicans just aren't aware of. Um, New Mexico has, you know, we rank 51st in education. And so... Out of 50 states, and I'm sure that probably <laughs> includes probably District of Columbia, right? But, yeah, it does include the District of Columbia. I think they actually rank in the th mid-30s, if I'm not mistaken. So New Mexico being 51st in education, we, we really lack in areas as far as like our People know what our civic duties are, what our responsibilities are in government, but not only that is, but how government policies affect our daily lives, like inflation and what is inflation. And so we actually educate um, the Mexicans on what inflation is, what the aspects of inflation can be, and then how to combat it. Through, uh, we offer trainings like uh, for a community, uh, financial literacy classes. Do you find that New Mexicans in general, I mean, you think maybe the top three areas where they could really improve or they're showing interest that relate to what you do? What are a few items that are really important to New Mexicans? I mean, poverty for one is really important. Uh, we call it economic progress. Is If people don't know where their money's going and it's just continuously going out in tax dollars or if it's just... Um, eggs are costing more and milk is costing more and why are why are our daily commodities and our groceries and everything else costing more is we're able to explain that identify as far as the issues 
that are causing those infl inflationary prices and how to combat those. Well, give us some examples. Inflation is a great one. I think that's probably one that's almost at the forefront of everyone's mind. I was reading this morning, in fact, that there's a possibility of a secondary spike in inflation as it's happening in other countries around the world, which would be very uh, detrimental to any of us who are starting to see inflation go down. So let's talk about that. How in New Mexico would you say that what policies could be impacting inflation? Well, this I, last summer we did a true cost tour series, which was um, based upon fuel inflation. And so we went to gas stations. We re reduced the price from whatever it was for the current day. I think the highest we had gotten up to was like four forty nine a gallon for gas here in New rough. Mexico. That's rough. And we were selling gas for two dollars and thirty eight cents. And that brings awareness to the public that you know this is what we were paying for gas the prior year, and what was the policies that were causing all the influx of gas prices? So like the overregulation, reducing the amount of wells that we were tapping here in New Mexico, which we really didn't see that much of since the state did incur $2.5 billion in excess revenue from fuel right. and gas sales. And that was driven purely by excess um, excise tax on gasoline. So doesn't it didn't really make sense that the gas prices were going up so high and where the money was going to was governmental revenue and not to New Mexicans' pockets. Well, and you know, something that's interesting. So let's utilize uh, oil and gas revenue. We are, in New Mexico, highly dependent on oil and gas revenue. We Extremely are. dependent on that. That's how we pretty much fund our government. It funds state. our schools. That's exactly right. So, and, and that's, that. I mean, everybody talks about that. That's not hidden. That's not a partisan uh, statement. That is a straightforward statement. So it doesn't make sense, really, for a state like New Mexico, who is really dependent on oil and gas revenue, to be heavy advocates for doing away with gas stoves, for example, <laughs> or maybe doing away with uh, uh, internal combustion engines, because those kind of things are going to reduce the amount of uh, use, could potentially, uh, that would impact uh, all of us and really would leave us as a state government impoverished, wouldn't it? Well, not only that, as you look at New Mexico, it, it comprised of more rural communities than we are metropolitan communities. And in rural areas, access to electrification, electric vehicles, even talking about like large earth moving vehicles is not happening. And there's not enough industry and influx or innovation in electrified vehicles to warrant the decrease in um, fossil fuel at Dependency, really. Right. And, and a state like New Mexico is, is very, very unique because we do have a lot of rural communities. Well, we'll talk a little bit with us, if you could, about how people find out about what you're doing and how to find more information. Where do they go? I mean, what, what kind of places do they find your resources? Well, we're very active on social media. Uh, we do have TikTok, or not TikTok, uh, Twitter. We are on Facebook, Instagram. And AFPNM is really where they can find us. We have events going on all the time. Our sister organization, Libre, which is another organization underneath the Stand Together Trust. Um, Libre organization focuses on doing like ESL classes for the Latino community as well as immigration uh, citizenship classes. We do education just on education alone. Um, what the issues are going on in education in New Mexico, how you know school choice or better charter schools, um, different choices in education will well, is, is render different results. Is uh, education uh, options and choice something that uh, AFP talk, talks a lot about? Because oh, we, that's happening in other states, yes. not so much in New Mexico, yeah. but it's happening in other states a lot. At Americans for Prosperity, we're big proponents of school choice. Um, we are supporting you know, education freedom accounts here in New Mexico, and I look forward to speaking with our lawmakers Tell this legislative session. Tell us about a freedom session. account. People don't know what it is. An education freedom account basically puts the funding in the control of the students and parents. Uh, in New Mexico, we're very blessed to have you know, our tax and rev department who filters money over to PED, and PED could actually hold the money for parents, and parents could just say, hey, this is where I want to send my student to school, and those funds get directed to the school of this parent's choice. Is that similar to what they're doing in the state of Arizona? It is, very similar to the, what they're doing in Arizona, Utah, Texas has a form of uh, education savings accounts, and so does the state of Florida, Virginia. A lot of states are getting jumping on with this. And after COVID, I think parents realized that um, public schools aren't necessarily the best choice for their kids because it's 
it's outside of, we're looking for something outside of the box. Well, you know, it, it, it makes sense to give the parents an opportunity to yeah. choose what best works for them. Right. And I think one of the things, Luke, that kind of uh, hits uh, a chord with me is the reality that if I were 50 first, in, in, there must be a better way. I mean, because obviously what we're doing isn't working and the states that are doing something different are having some better success. So, but, but you have to know what those options are. Right. So that's a, where, a way that I'm sure that you folks are engaged as well. Yeah, so uh, we do a lot of education on education as well with AFP. We do have, you know, we are in partnership with other coalitions partner like Moms for Liberty. Um, there's just a lot of opportunity in education and people for, for people to get involved and whatever their passion is, whether it be education, whether it be healthcare, whether it be poverty, um, New Mexicans can get behind us a topic that we at New Americans for Prosperity are very passionate about and working towards making better. You know, as we wrap up today, why do you do what you do? I mean, what was it that took you from your past career choices to uh, Americans for Prosperity? Well, I mean, it's about the heart, right? It's any, any passion project or anything that's worth doing is going to come from your heart. And it's going to take hard work. And I'm not afraid to work hard and do what we do to make sure that we are doing things that come from the heart and benefit the Mexicans because New Mexico is about heart. Well, appreciate today uh, having Luke with us as he has been sharing with us for Americans for Prosperity. And of course, the information on how you can find additional resources has been on the screen. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Watch the Daystar Network 24 hours a day on KAZQ 32.5. Certainly appreciative of each and every one of you who are participating with Alpha Omega Broadcasting. You know, we're rolling into the second month of the year. I cannot believe that we are into February. We are. Uh, and, and moving yes. into this, this second mm -hmm. month. But as we're doing so, it is really important that we reiterate what we're focused on for 2023. Uh, some of the items that we continue to need to make progress on continue to be some of the production equipment. I was talking to one of our folks this morning who uh, works in production, one of our uh, directors, and, and they were talking to me about um, a, some, like a viewfinder. There's some of the, the new things that you can do with equipment is amazing. Like you can actually just tap on a viewfinder and it will cause the camera to focus. Really? Yeah, it's, wow. it's, it's really incredible. But as we've been investing, you know, we're having to buy some additional accessories for some of the production equipment. But the other side, this year, where we're going to have to make some additional headway is in master control as we are doing updates and upgrades. And hopefully we'll be able to give you a behind the scenes look at some of that as we've even been working on some new things that has to do with, you know, emergency aware awareness. So sure. that's good. Well, we would love to hear from you and the Probably the simplest way for you to connect with us is online at kazq32.org. Um, we have a program guide online. You can find out all of our new programs, which we have some coming on board uh, in the month of February. Yes. And maybe the schedule's changed, but you can look at that and make sure you don't miss a thing. You can also donate safely online. If you'd like to speak with someone, you can always call into the station at 505-884-8355, extension 101 or simply mail in your correspondence or donation to Alpha Omega Broadcasting at 4501 Montgomery Boulevard Northeast, Albuquerque, New Mexico, 87109. Of course, we are grateful for all of your gifts and partnerships with many of you over the years. And we know that God will supply our need and he will give us the increase so that this ministry continues forward because it is vital in our time. So thank you so much. Watch Jimmy Swagger and the Sun Life Network 24 hours a day on KAZQ 32.3. We're privileged to have with us today Elisa Martinez, and she is with probably is someone you have heard from before because we've had the privilege of having her with us on Spectrum from New Mexico Alliance for Life. Elisa, we're so glad that you're with us, and it's always good to, to get updates from you. Why don't you tell us today a little bit, for folks who may not know you, uh, just a back, background on yourself and how you got involved with the, well, you know, the, the fight to stop abortion throughout New Mexico and really broader. Well, thank you so much for having me on, uh, Pastor Brenton. It's always a pleasure to be here and, um, you know, discuss what really is, is I believe, the greatest human rights issue of our time, sure. uh, which is the right to life. Uh, and, you know, I've gotten involved probably for the last 10 years uh, and uh, as founder and executive director of the Alliance for Life, I've also served as the 
uh, pro-life lobbyist uh, at the New Mexico legislature where we've, you know, we've seen a lot of uh, battles take place on this issue. We've tried to educate the public about, you know, what exactly is going on here in New Mexico um, and really make changes in the law and, and with our lawmakers. Now, as we've been watching over the course of the last several months, there's been a lot of activity. Obviously, uh, we've we've heard of Roe versus Wade being overturned uh, as a as a federal uh, as a federal stand, and that really pushed things back to the states, didn't it? Now, how did things change nationally in terms of the the landscape for that battle, and really what's been started to happen in New Mexico? Does that mean that it's? I, I know it doesn't mean that it's illegal in New Mexico. Tell us, fill us in the blanks for us. Well, sure. So since the um, Dobbs case had overturned Roe v. Wade just last year uh, in June, uh, we've seen some tremendous, uh, you know, tremendous growth in the area of pro-life across the country uh, where pro-life laws that were passed at the state level were all of a sudden enacted and, and legalized. For, uh, in Texas, Oklahoma, Arizona, for example, is in litigation. Uh, but I believe 16 states now have pro-life laws on the books. Uh, New Mexico is not one of those states, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. uh, and because of our neighboring states, uh, you know, uh, upholding pro-life values and pro-life laws, they're coming here to New Mexico. So we've actually seen a growth. In fact, uh, the Mississippi abortion center that was at the center of the Dobbs uh, versus Jackson case has now come to uh, Donia Anna County in Las Cruces. I think we covered that here on uh, Spectrum some months ago mm -hmm. that there was a there was a move of uh, what you know of people coming in and that specific uh, ab abortion center moving into the Las Cruces generally that general area. All right. All right. So here we are. We're in the midst of the long legislative session because we've just had the elections that we have every two years. So we're in a sixty day session. This is where more of the things that are not related to financial areas are addressed and dealt with. What kind of things pro-life, uh, you know, anti-life are going on in Santa Fe right now? Because there's already a lot already happened. Is there anything left to happen in New Mexico? <laughs> well, you know, unfortunately, so New Mexico has abortions throughout all nine months of pregnancy. Mm -hmm. uh, folks can go to, you know, the website there and, and, you know, don't take my word for it, do your own research. But this is happening, you know, five, six, seven days a week here in New Mexico. We've tried to address this issue for many years at the legislature. Uh, and, and so, unfortunately, this governor, who's probably the most pro-abortion governor in our state's history has has dedicated to allocate 10 million dollars for a new abortion center in Las Cruces uh, and they're also looking to partner with the University of New Mexico who is al also performing elective abortions in New Mexico and so they've teamed up together they're 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 looking to expand coming to communities across the state not just Albuquerque anymore this is a statewide issue Mm -hmm. uh, so, so that's going to be a concern that we're watching. The taxpayer funding component, you know, New Mexico taxpayers are paying upwards of 78% of all elective abortions uh, and, 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 you know, some may be medically necessary, but of all abortions, uh, we're funding them as well. So those are some concerns that we hope to address at the legislature. Now, Elisa, as we think of, uh, of abortion as, a, uh, as an area that's pulled on, okay, mm -hmm. nationally, one of the things I think is interesting is that we'll hear that, you know, X number of people are in favor of abortion, wanting things to stand and to stay the same. But you also hear of, well, people are, a certain number of people, usually a majority of people are against abortion after a certain point. And I don't hear that is uh, really explained as well. Have, have you heard those descriptions where people are saying, you know, once a baby can feel pain or it's known to feel pain or once the baby is viable, where is the polling on that nationally? Do you have any idea? So here's, I'm glad that you, you asked that question because here's what our, our, our viewers need to understand is that uh, two thirds, 70% of Americans actually want to see abortions limited to the first trimester and what, that's the first 12 weeks of pregnancy now one of the things that folks should understand is that that is pretty much what's done throughout europe really close to that marker i mean i, I think right. it's the 16th week if memory serves me so you're really close to that first trimester and and we say oh you know we have more restrictive laws than they have around the world and that's really not true 
It's not true, and especially it's not true for New Mexico. New Mexico has probably become the largest late-term abortion center in the country, if not in the world, other than you know, North Korea and China, where they already are having massive human rights abuses. So you know, New Mexicans need to be aware of what's going on. They need to get involved. They need to you know, stand up, speak out, um, elect pro-life leaders, and certainly pay attention to what's going on at the legislative session this year. Now, when you talk about things that are going on this year and uh, talking about getting involved, how can people get involved? Certainly, you know, if, if you uh, are living in uh, New Mexico, you can contact your legislator. And uh, have you found those folks to be receptive or have you found those folks to be pretty entrenched in their positions? So we go back to 2019 where, again, uh, the governor tried to introduce a repeal of the abortion law uh, a preemptive to the Roe v. Wade decision because everyone was prepared for this decision to be overturned. Uh, and the, 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 the law that was on the books would have outlawed abortion across New Mexico. Uh, and so we fought in 2019 with the public behind us, contacting, that. calling, um, showing up, praying. The prayer is probably the most important aspect of this issue, really. Um, and we were able to defeat that effort back in 2019 with eight Democrats in the Senate. Uh, now, now things have changed a little bit in this this uh, 2020. Uh, I'm sorry, 2023. Well, the 2022 uh, legislature. elections, which are where we are now. Exactly, right? exactly. So, so you know, I think with people showing up and staying involved, staying informed, um, they can go to my website. Please go to the website to um, stay informed. Sign up for the email alerts because things are going to move very fast. Mm -hmm. And what they bank upon is the fact that people aren't paying attention. They have you know jobs, family, school, um, other things on their mind. But if they can space pay special attention over these next 60 days. Um, you know, miracles can happen, God can intervene, and certainly we can see some victories um, in the area of pro-life. All right, so uh, the website that you've made available at the bottom of the screen is available. If uh, you would like to follow up getting these alerts, what does an alert look like? Is it sent via email or via text? What, what could people expect? Well, again, just sign up for the email alerts. Okay, email so alert. in their e inbox, we, we will um, update them as things are moving. As I said, they're very, very quickly moving through committees. These bills get assigned to a committee. Uh, they have a hearing. We need people to also uh, participate in the committee hearings and testify. Uh, and we, uh, you know, try to keep folks educated about what they can say, what, you know, what's at stake with different types of legislation. In fact, just last year, uh, we also stopped a bill that wanted to expand school-based health clinics that were offering all types of sexual uh, uh, health and birth control to minors without parental consent. We were able to stop that bill in these committees, um, again, by the public staying involved and informed. So you have seen uh, the engagement of the public making a difference. And I think there's sometimes a, the question in folks' mind, uh, Elisa, if, if that's really gonna matter, you know? If, if, I, if I go to Santa Fe, is it gonna matter? If I call my legislator, does it, do they even care? Um, because it seems any, a lot of times, I mean, maybe from the outside looking in, you're on the inside looking around, right. but it seems from the outside looking in that sometimes they don't listen very much to what is said, but maybe you have had a different experience and that would be the hope. Well, let's keep in mind, these are politicians that we're working with, that we're talking about. So politicians are worried about generally the next election mm -hmm. and accountability to their constituents. So if they know that you're paying attention as a voter, you're, you're reaching out and you're gonna hold them accountable, absolutely. And we've seen it happen. We've okay. seen it happen. All right, Elisa Martinez with us today with New Mexico Alliance for Life. And there is on the screen information on how you can get plugged in to receive email alerts on this legislative session. Thanks for being with us. Thank you so much, Pastor. to go to the book of Exodus, Exodus chapter number 17. Ruth, uh, kind of the setup for all the things that have been happening in the book of Exodus include the fact that the children of Israel have been delivered by God through plagues that have been sent by God against the Egyptians. They've been delivered across the Red Sea and they have uh, received water from the rock and manna. But we get to chapter 17 
and they have a new foe that emerges, which is the Amalekites. Let's read a little bit about them, starting okay. verses, uh, well, around verse 10 or so. Okay. So Joshua did what Moses had commanded and fought the army of Amalek. Meanwhile, Moses, Aaron, and Hur climbed to the top of a nearby hill. As long as Moses held up his staff in his hand, the Israelites had the advantage. But whenever he dropped his hand, the Amalekites gained the advantage. You know, in this passage, we begin to see that Moses is up there on top of this hill, and he's, he's lifting his hand, mm -hmm. has the staff in it. If you've ever lifted up your hands very long, have you noticed that the, it doesn't take long until they start to get tired? Yeah, heavy. They mm -hmm. get heavy, and they start to hurt. But we hear of two men that come alongside of him. We don't have time to read about all of it, but we hear of Aaron and Hur. Mm -hmm. And as he begins to get weary, they find a rock for him to sit on. And then they begin to hold up his hands. Yes. And I think that really talks to us about, you know, Scripture refers to the fact that, that when we agree together, we're two agree together touching anything, it shall be done. Yes. There's a, a verse that comes in Psalms. Uh, Psalm 34, verse 15, which speaks of, of God listening to our prayers. The, mm -hmm. Would you the, like me to read Yeah, it? why don't you? If you the have eyes it, of the Lord watch over those who do right. His ears are open to their cries for help. Now that speaks to us about the fact that God responds when we enlist His help, when yes. we ask Him, God, I need your help today. Would you please help me? Would you, would you send your assistance? Mm -hmm. Those things matter. We should never just assume, well, I've got this problem. I hope it works out. Ask God for your help. Ask and you shall receive. That's right. You will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open unto you. All, all of those principles, Jesus reiterated those that you just talked about in the Sermon on the Mount. They're Old Testament principles and they're New Testament principles. Yes. There is power in asking God for your help. If you had time to read through the rest of the account, you would see that there really was a victory that was won yes. that day. Well, thanks for being with us. I hope you have a blessed day in the Lord Jesus Christ. Until next time, we'll look forward to seeing you again.